Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we should be fine. Although I'm going to say that and there's going to be no audio. So let me check that real quick because I don't want to be that guy. Okay. Let me lower this a little bit. A little bit. There we go. Okay. That looks way better. Okay. We're ready? I think so. Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. 256. Uh, okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 256 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Hiam. Tom's there. Hi. In a nice little box. I'm here. Yes, I'm, I'm in a box. I can't get out. I'm trapped. Help. Send help. I mean, I've been looking at what we've done over the years. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately. And I'm not going to tell you, but if you've never watched people cleaning cars, I don't know. It's it's therapeutic. I mean, I'm not saying you have to watch all 30 minutes of somebody cleaning a car. Like, you can sk skip, like, they clean four four floor mats. So you see one, you see all four of them. But and, and I think there's some, like, voodoo magic on how dirty they make it, like, on purpose and everything else. But... Everyone has all these, like, and all of a sudden our episode from like six years ago popped up and we were using the lower thirds and this is pre Tom beard without yep. his quarantine beard. And I'm like, we pre, looked really young. Pre Tom quarantine weight. Yeah. My, uh, my waistline has seen a far, far better day as I had to buy new pants. Cause yeah, the, the COVID 190 is real. It's like the freshman 15, but even worse. So, so like every so I'm looking at our YouTube channel and the, the, the overlay that we have is actually really nice. Like I'm actually impressed by that and it makes me want to do more. And we we're just talking about this pre-show, how, how, um, I wanted to cut it. So it's exactly going. And then I said, well, people can just fast forward. Cause you know, the first 10 minutes, we're not asking you to like, and subscribe or do anything. It's not like this, try, do this and that. And the other thing, we're not giving you directions. We're just talking. So if you know, that, okay, we have to skip the first uh, minute or so on the, on the Twitch stream or the YouTube stream or whatever it is, that's fine. Or on pocket cast, set it to go. Well, no pocket pocket cast is actually pretty accurate. So because we take the recordings and go from there. So maybe, maybe this is a New Year's resolution. So, and but I just want to say, as we record, we're getting dumped with snow. But, and so after this show, I'm going to actually go outside. I'm going to, I've never, I didn't run the snowblower last year. So I, I feel empowered to try, at least try, maybe get up a few inches before it really comes down. That's, uh. this is going to sound weird because I hate dealing with snow. I hate driving it. I hate, shoveling it like i hate everything around snow but i love snow i love winter i love the the holiday time of year this is clearly my favorite time of year and living in seattle for the past three years we don't really get a bunch of snow like maybe maybe an inch a couple inches um there was one year when we just got dumped on and it, it quite literally shut the city down because we just don't have the infrastructure to deal with it uh, and that's that's the thing people don't understand. Like everyone laughs at Houston. Like there's a little bit of ice on the road and literally the, sh the city grounds to, or grinds to a halt. Um, but it's all about infrastructure, right? Like if, if you're living in Northern Michigan and you get two feet of snow, cool. There's trucks, there's salt, there's everything out there. They have a process. Like the city knows how to handle it because it's just a thing that happens. Um, in Seattle, we don't get a whole lot of snow. Houston doesn't see a lot of winter weather. So when we get impacted with this stuff, there's no trucks. There's limited ice and supplies and people don't know what's going on. And you don't have an entire populace who knows how to drive in winter weather. So yeah, these cities grind to a halt. Um, so it's kind of funny to see because I did grow up in Northern Michigan. Let's ask you this. So we have whatever you want to call a virtual snow day tomorrow. Should a virtual snow day because COVID should, should we, it should it be a snow day? Like literally like what a snow day is, or you know what? We're home anyway. Let's get the job done. And I'll, I'll give you answers to both of them in a second, but which obviously everyone wants a snow day, but your parents, your, your parents, your teacher, your pick, 
put your hat on that you want to put on. What should happen tomorrow? Because clearly we're we, we can't go to school tomorrow. There's no mm-hmm. there's no taking a bus to school tomorrow. So like all right. To this year, this year in particular has just been an absolute mess. Literally unprecedented in I'm gonna call it the modern era. Yes, we had you know what's commonly referred to as the Spanish flu, but like in the modern era, this is the first time I've seen an event like this. Um, it's probably a lot of people's first time seeing an event like this. Uh, normalcy has been com- like almost completely eradicated from our lives in the year 2020. And a snow day, like a good old fashioned, it snowed too much, we can't get to school, we're gonna lay around in our pajamas and play video games or run outside and build a snowman. Like, um, I'm all for that. A, a snow day is just just a little bit of normalcy, just a flavor additive, just a topping, just a little bit of garnish on the mess that is 2020. Uh, I'm in favor of taking school off for a snow day, even if you don't rationally have to. So, so this is the most perfect snow day in in existence. It's the early closing into the snow day into the delayed opening. It's perfect. That's great. And it's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh. Like the, you can, so you have a Wednesday early, oh, Thursday man. off, Friday delayed. Like and... you, you can't ask for a more perfect thing. Now, now let me let me dump some realism on you. Now let me dump the the 2020 all this other stuff on you. So if you don't know how public schools work, we have to we're contracted for X number of days, 180 days. So they build in snow days. Those are days on the calendar that have a little like little like asterisk. If no snow, you get this off. So let's take that normalcy that I agree with you on. And let's add that Memorial Day Tuesday. Think of Memorial Day Tuesday. It's a, if we don't use the snow day, we get Memorial Day Tuesday off. You are probably going to be vaccinated by then. It's going to be warm outside. You can do a lot of other stuff. Staying home, I've done that for nine months. It's not another, like, I have, I, I don't know. It'd be, it's, we're told to be mindful of the snow and power outages and everything else. So I get, we have the most perfect system for the snow day. The early, the day off, the delayed on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all this is perfect. But I'm looking at being vaccinated and being at the beach and being warm and being outside and being with friends. So I don't want the snow day. We have it. We're actually our school. My school district is making me work tomorrow. So I will be in front here. But anyway, we've we've wasted seven and a half minutes on this. But anyway, it's good because Tom's going to enlighten us on. I think the new coolest hashtag we have solar winds. Or fire yeah. eye or something. I don't know. I don't even know what we're talking about this specifically. Just unfortunate. Um, and it's not, it is not random. Um, today we are talking about a cyber attack. Um, which it's saying, saying cyber still is hilarious to me. Um, that's the, the word we all used to make fun of. But hey, it's common parlance now. So um, cyber attacks. Yeah. Um, so, you know, quick introduction we try to be nice to our listeners if you listen to this show for advice on what to do at your house how to protect your family stuff like that this is a news update show right we're, we're going to be delving into fire eye into solar winds into the various companies that are affected by this um and you know for those of you at home listening for advice on what do you do to protect yourself from this stuff uh there's nothing there's nothing you can do Keep updated, uh, make sure your patches are installed. But frankly, this is, uh, from all reports, this is a state-level actor, and there's no way that your home network is going to stand up to a government-funded intruder. Um, not that it, and they would have any reason to attack you, and not that you would be running enterprise monitoring products. There's just not much for you to do here besides keep your stuff up to date. So uh, if you want to dip out, now's the time. There's really... Really not a whole lot left. Um, But for those of you who want to stay for the news, um, FireEye came out and they said, hey, we got hacked. Um, 
somebody took a bunch of what is fire eye let's do that what is fire yeah, eye that's that's probably let's start, let's start with with fire eye um fire eye is um a security firm um they do everything from penetration testing to helping companies um you know respond to various attacks uh they've got uh, you know, different products and services that they offer to try to keep companies safe or to try to break in and then write reports afterwards. Um, you know, it's like most security firms out there, they write a lot of their own tools. Uh, one thing that FireEye uh, explained after this breach is they said a lot of antivirus and like intrusion protection systems and intrusion defense systems and, and these these different products will grab onto and concentrate on a certain tool for an exploit, right? Like you have the actual procedure on how an exploit works, and then you've got the tool that makes that easily usable. Um, so a lot of, a lot of these products, uh, these defense products will basically identify the tool itself and not necessarily the issue. So a company can say, oh no, we're we're patched against that. Or we we have this blinky box that will capture anyone that tries to come through with this exploit. But they're mistaken. The exploit is still there. They're still vulnerable. They've just guarded against the easiest way to execute that exploit. Um, so FireEye develops a lot of their own tooling to run these exploits to prove to people, look, you do guard against this particular tool like you guard against getting hit in the head with a shovel you don't guard against getting hit in the head with a baseball bat what you need is a helmet but you're not wearing one because you're blocking all the shovels and you think you're safe you're clearly not you can still get hit in the head with a bat or any other blunt object wear a helmet um so uh yeah they they got hacked but how that happened is it turns out that it was an upstream vendor problem. There's this company called SolarWinds. They do a whole lot of stuff, but they're most known for network monitoring. You install little programs and the server into your business and uh, you install programs and monitoring agents on every single system in your business. And what it does is it reports back to the central hub and gives you a nice clean dashboard of here's exactly what's going on with your network. Here are any issues we found. Um, you know, here's stuff that you should patch. Here's like something that's experiencing latency issues. Like it does a lot of cool stuff. You can get a whole lot of valuable um, IT information out of this product, um, which is why 425 out of 500 Fortune 500 companies are using SolarWinds products, including several government agencies in the United States and abroad. Um, namely the Department of Homeland Security, uh, was one of their customers among other you know, kind of, kind of important defense, uh, organizations in the U S. So solar winds was hacked. Um, and this isn't like a simple, somebody double clicked on an email attachment and, oh no, it's over for them. Um, this was what they call a supply chain hack, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah go on. if if you have any questions now it's, now's the time no, to I, i'm just saying or... well no i'm not <laughs> interrupting i'm saying supply chain hacks they're cool but they're scary because you really can't guard against them and there's no way to prove it and if you remember we talked about the micro tick micro tick thing with apple and uh and then which bloomberg still claims us that they're 100 percent accurate and everyone else is claiming that they're not and that was a supply chain attack so Supply chain attacks are scary because you literally, what is the end user going to do? You're not there watching the sand being crushed into silicon to make the chip. So it's, it's when you say supply chain attack, that is, that, that is not fun. Yeah, they're, they're dangerous. They're expensive to pull off. Um, and especially in this where it's not a hardware supply it's software so solar winds um you know they've got this big complicated software monitoring system um they build it piece by piece they bundle it all together and then they hand it to their customers and they say install all of these random pieces of software um they're a perfectly reputable company they're listed on stock exchanges like there's there's no way that they would be super shady that you should look sideways uh, on on businesses using these products um we'll get into some of their gaffes and mess ups here in a bit um but basically what happened is that in the process of solar winds developing the software an attacker got in 
and was able to add pieces of code into the software. And then when, uh, when SolarWinds packaged all this up, built their software and shipped it out to people, they were then shipping infected code, like bespoke, made on the fly, made for this one purpose, not general purpose malware, but made specifically to target SolarWinds customers. Um, and people installed it as part of an update or part of a patch. And yeah, I know I just told you to patch all your stuff, but hopefully Microsoft doesn't have a supply chain attack. There's not really ways you can, it's, it's you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. If, if you that, don't install that, the that's update. That's the scary part. Yeah, if Say, you don't install the updates, still... you're you're vulnerable. But if you do install that, the updates, the one of them had, like it's it's a hard thing that, to defend against. That's what we're saying. The last bastion is install the updates, and then the conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theory is what happens if they're implanting the vaccine, the microchip in the vaccine, and you're like, but you want to be updated. You want not want to get sick, and, and we don't know unless we have this and that and the other thing. So it's th that's why I'm saying it's really scary. Slight, slight sidebar. If you are concerned about vaccines tracking your movements, I would first get rid of the thing you hold in your pocket that's tracking all your movements. This is so much better and more robust of a tracking device. And for those of you on the audio version, I'm holding up my cell phone. Cell phones are such a, a better tracking device than anything that they could inject in you. And uh, by the way, it's it doesn't really work that way anyway. So yeah, your cell phone is tracking you. Vaccines don't. Um, anyway, um, so <sighs> SolarWinds was compromised. When the SolarWinds updater ran, it pulled down these compromised components and infected everyone. Um, so it's now being reported that this is clearly the work of a state actor. Now keep in mind, attribution is hard. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to try to make it more accurate, but it's always going to be fuzzy, right? Computers are hard, networks are hard, people can bounce through a bunch of different proxy layers, you can, you know, kind of maneuver your code, and especially, like, I've seen, um, like, variable names, right? Like, where malware authors will translate that into a different language, and then maybe you can tell, okay, they kind of used Google Translate here, but maybe it's a native speaker, like, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of get hints, but being certain is difficult with digital attacks, just due to the nature of them. It's easy to hide in plain sight. Um, so what this hack did is basically gave the attackers access to all of these companies' internal systems. Um, one of which, of course, was the U.S. Treasury as well. So, so yeah, we can get the taxes? We definitely can get the taxes. Okay. We can get the taxes. Um, I'm just so, asking. Yeah, I mean, it's it. They're there. It's nothing. Uh, nothing really stopping them. Um, but yeah, it basically gave entire, like, complete control uh, to the systems, and then they combine that with a bunch of other hacks and ways to navigate and move laterally throughout networks. And uh, basically, you can assume that these companies are pretty well compromised. Maybe not a hundred percent, but it's up there. Um, this is really, really unfortunate. Um, I don't want to blame SolarWinds outright because these attacks, as we've discussed, are really difficult to defend against. But then it came to light that, yeah, there's a SolarWinds update FTP server and they were using a password that was clearly exposed in a SolarWinds GitHub repository. So anyone who went looking could just get direct access to the FTP server. Um, like that's that's not great. Did it? You know, was it responsible for this hack? We don't know. Um, could it have been? Maybe. Um, so, you know, don't don't get out your your torches and pitchforks yet. But there's clearly some things that could have been done better. Um, the issue really is um, that these customers installed a perfectly normal update and got owned. Um, so. And not like a little owned, like completely owned, not like crypto ransomware owned, like state actors dumping secrets and infiltrating custom, uh, government systems kind of owned. Um, well, let's ask you this. I mean, is there a reason to do it now? I mean, is there anything going on specifically now? Like, I feel like this is an August, September, October surprise type thing. So it was. We just discovered it now. Okay, so... 
Yeah, uh, these companies have been compromised for a while. Um, now we're we're gonna have links to Krebs on security. He goes into a lot of details on these things, but uh, frankly, if you just look around the internet, there are stories everywhere reporting on this. Um, it's it's not great. This is definitely not great, but FireEye, uh, Microsoft, uh, a bunch of various security researchers all banded together to, um, you know, figure this stuff out and divulge us in a, in a safe way after, you know, trying to work with these companies. Um, the, the U.S. government, actually, the people responsible for saying what should and shouldn't operate on U.S. government networks uh, actually put out an emergency directive saying, hey, if you have SolarWinds products on your network, disconnect them immediately. Like, don't worry about the consequences, just disconnect it. We'll figure it out later. Um, and now everyone's going through a, a massive cleanup effort trying to get these attackers out of their systems. Like, do we know, I guess, the assumption is everything could have been taken because they were, because yeah. they're not siloed off. They're not like, oh, in the security, the security uh, IP subnet, they're on the main subnets because they have to right. be. Yeah. So, so we don't know what actually happened. Exactly. Because SolarWinds, um, you know, by definition, their network monitoring product monitors all devices on your network. Yeah, yeah it's it's going to have access to touch just about everything. Um, so more than Fortune 25 of the U.S. Fortune 500 uh, is potentially compromised. All 10 of top 10 U.S. telecommunications companies. I'm, I'm reading this directly from... Uh, KrebsOnSecurity.com. This comes from SolarWinds pages where they're bragging about how wide their install base is. Um, all five branches of the U.S. military, Pentagon, State Department, NASA, NSA, like it goes on and on and on. Um, this is pretty serious. Um, now, attribution is currently pointing towards Russia as the, the state-sponsored actor. Um, again, attribution's hard. Might not be. Could be somebody masquerading as Russia. Could actually be Russia. Um, currently, all the reports and evidence suggest that, yeah, it is a Russian-sponsored state actor. But, you know, we'll, we'll say 90% certainty on that. I mean, I'm just still trying to figure out, I guess, obviously we know motive. Motive is to get as much information to do things. But I'm looking for that. What, like... Like you said, it was there in August, September. Were they waiting for something? I mean, the election is over. Um, we're in this downturn. Like, they're not holding it for ransom. It's not trying to extract money. It sounds like one of those. They're just sitting there just to see what they can extract. I don't think they know yet. Uh, sorry, I had my dates wrong. It actually happened in March 2020. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things happened in March 2020, as it turns out. Um but yeah, the malware itself um, was really clever. It didn't like immediately start doing stuff. It had a 12 to 14 day waiting period. Uh, and in some cases, based on the, the malware's heuristics, it would just not do anything. It would just shut itself off. Like if, if it didn't meet a certain list of criteria about where it was infected and what it was doing and what it had access to, it just shut itself off. Uh, the malware was written really, really well. It kept itself really, really hidden until it had reason to strike. Uh, and strike it did. So yeah, they they have their, basically their API level that allows their command and control systems to talk to the malware, had everything from, you know, list the users on the system, list the files, download files, inject files. Um, like it could do just about anything. Um, there's, there's a ton of potential in this, this reminds software. Me, this reminds me of Stuxnet. I mean, this literally yep. reminds me of Stuxnet because... Yep. Again, you're saying supply chain attack. That means somebody had to be there to put that code that went into production and verify and everything else. And I know that Department of Defense doesn't just be like, oh, hey, connect this to our network. Um, yeah. The NSA doesn't connect to the network. Uh, so, and then to say, hey, it, hey, it only affects 1% of the population, the population that doesn't wear masks. I mean, it, that's what it sounds. I mean, that's what it sounds like. So it doesn't affect everybody, but it affects... so. Like I said, I, if, if it's state sponsored, I mean, other than going after, it sounds like they found something that was on all the, all the three letter agencies, computers, some vendor that was all there that they could exploit. And again, it's really hard. I mean, 
if you're a security company, it's another black eye. But again, I just want to remind people doing security is really hard. Yeah, it's it's it, having something on like what you said on FTP. FTP, yes, FTP has been dead for 10, 15 years, but there are mission critical servers that still need it and they still have it up. And it's one of those things like, don't we, we like, it's, it's just a slap in the face, but yeah. it happens. And like, it, I totally agree with what you said. Security is hard. And one of the reasons that it's so hard is because take a look at the situation, right? Like the companies that were attacked aren't dumb. I mean, they're they're buying network monitoring products, right? Like they they are trying to the best of their ability to make sure that they know what's happening on their network, you know, where the bandwidth is going. They're using reputable companies. They're installing updates. Like they're doing all the right things on paper. The issue with security and really any kind of work like this is the attackers only have to win once. The defenders have mm -hmm. to win every single time. Imagine a soccer match where one team is purely playing defense. They're not trying to score. They're just trying to prevent goals. And the other team only has to score once and they win the game yep. forever. That's how security works. And that's why it's so, so difficult to be a defender in InfoSec. It's because you have to win 100% of your battles or it's over. And being a defender is boring, whereas being, uh, being an attacker is much more fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Red teaming is a lot more fun than blue teaming. And that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's unfortunate. That's what we say. We think the TSA, like, well... We agree the TSA is doing or not doing what they're supposed to do. Yes, it takes one person. It's the it's the one time the one person lets their guard down. So there has to be all these layers and everything. And every layer adds time, adds complexity. And if speed's the name of the game, you have a whole set of different problems. So there is a – it's – like you said, I don't think the average person has any – they obviously have nothing to worry about unless some sort of data was lost or some sort of – ancillary stuff your computers are not being targeted this is not I, this is not attacking you and me but it's attacking like you said the majority of all the companies you deal with yeah um there's a uh, a chinese cybersecurity firm uh, again reading word for word from krebsonsecurity.com head over to krebs site if you want these details um actually just just follow krebs throw them in your rss reader add them to your favorites list like krebs krebs is legit um, so, um, Chinese cybersecurity firm Red Drip Team published their findings on GitHub saying its decoder tool had identified nearly a hundred suspected victims of the SolarWinds breach, including universities, governments, and high-tech companies. Um, so I, this, this gets even worse when you take a look at what happened after, or at least right before this news broke. Um, apparently... Uh, top investors in SolarWinds sold millions of dollars of stock days before the intrusion was revealed. Um, the Washington Post cited a former enforcement official uh, at the SEC, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, basically the, the people responsible for ensuring that stock in securities trading is above board and on the level. They're the people who investigate things like insider trading. Um, and this, uh, this former enforcement official said, yeah, this, this is literally the behavior that triggers an insider trading investigation. Um, so that's, uh, concerning and unethical. Uh, but Hey, you know, it's, it's a thing. Don't worry. It's white collar crime. Nobody cares about that. So, uh, trading. yeah, this like, there's some really, I'm trying to keep this super high level, but there is some really, really cool tech that went into this malware. Um, so the, so Orion, um, SolarWinds update platform, um, uses a, a custom communication protocol and the malware actually use that custom communication protocol and piggyback on top of it. So if you were analyzing network traffic, it just looked like solar winds update traffic. It looked completely innocuous when, when the malware was trying to hide data, it would actually hide it in encoded strings inside of solar winds log files. So it looked like 
completely innocuous log files. Like it just looked like something SolarWinds would write. Like nobody looked at it twice. And if you decoded one of those strings, it didn't look like anything. It actually required several different strings across several different places in the log file combined together and then decoded to figure out exactly what they were doing. Uh, this, this is top tier level malware writing. Uh, it's, I mean, it's horrifying, right? But super, super impressive. I, I'm, I'm trying to balance. I always have trouble like looking at really cool hacks with really awful consequences because the technology is super, super exciting. It's horrible, but man, you got to respect the engineering that went into this. It's, it's so. Fantastic. Who's the director? Who's the director that directs the movie? Is this a Michael Bay exploding uh, type thing, or is this? Uh... No, no, it's not. It's not that overt. This is like, like a subtle heist bank robbery movie like this is this is like oceans 11 style stuff okay. but not that goofy like it's a heist movie that takes itself seriously and gets away perfectly okay i i think that's the best way to end it what's the who plays everyone in the movie and <laughs> we'll go from there so okay we, uh i think we're out of time my microphone cut out in the middle so i had to my headphones ran out of battery we think oh that no was the thing but yes, I'm learning now that I'm home that things like that happen. So at some point, I don't know what time it is, but we're around 30 minutes. So we're going to yep. end. That was good. Um, I don't know. Next Is next week the holiday? No. 7-23. So hopefully we have something for you next week. But again, it's uh, this This is what's consuming everyone for the, for the next week or so. So not that we want hacks to talk about but if there is something we would like to talk about it so anyway we will see everyone next week if you're on the if you're on this northeastern uh, nor'easter path stay safe we're okay so far if not have fun stay safe i guess wear a mask i think that's the right answer okay mm -hmm. everybody let's have a good night we'll talk to you next time goodbye see ya okay Okay, good. You hit stop about at the same time because I have to go back from you to figure out where I where I should start. No worries. Let me uh, take it from Twitch. there. Let's see in Twitch.